Well, it's been a busy day. I hope you've been enjoying the videos. It's been a good mixture of um, regular old news as well as some more meme-worthy stuff. Uh, this one, Team YouTube, I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, it sounds like an admission of defeat. Now, we know that creators have had an issue with the types of topics that we can talk about, um, whether or not we say they're a sensitive thing or not, whether they're video games, whether they're sporting events. Heck, last night, I saw a absolute ridiculous slew of my fellow YouTubers getting copyright strikes while their videos were still unlisted by CNN. That's a major, major issue that if Susan Wojcicki were to sit down with me, rather than currying favor for myself, like some of the giant creators that seem to have met with her but have no idea about the realities of the average YouTuber, I would talk about this. I would talk about protecting YouTubers in terms of fair use, especially in terms of public political debates where the information needs to get out there. It shouldn't be about controlling that information when millions of Americans don't consume news on television anymore. If you're under 40, most people get their news here on YouTube, whether it's from a bearded guy or, or uh, like me in my basement or a female or a group of people, whatever the case is, most people come to YouTube for their information, at least millennials and even some older, you know, five millennials plus. And when we can't cover things like the debate, when we can't cover things like, I don't know everything going on around the world right now, but, you know, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News can profit billions of dollars whipping everybody up into a panic we can't even have our say because not only will the, our videos be uh, stricken yellow, but they will also be also be suppressed. Now, I understand the risks that come with letting Coca-Cola ads run on somebody's video that's full of misinformation. But why not add simple disclaimers in front of the ads that say, you know, if you're seeing an ad on this video, we are not endorsing this particular video or something of that. I mean. Doesn't that seem like a easy solution? You know, people might write little outrage pieces, but you can say, look, we don't, you know, we have a disclaimer. We don't, we don't. Look, we'll, we'll ban, we'll avoid this channel in the future, but look, whatever. You know, my opinions, their opinions are their own, and we're just trying to reach their viewers kind of thing. And, you know, last week they put out, which was really just a sad, sad statement, saying that, sure, now we're going to monetize all the videos on the coof, but only for mainstream media, not for YouTubers, which in my opinion and many others are simply far more reliable and accurate than mainstream media. Now, there are people on this platform that are concerned with fear mongering, but their numbers are far smaller to those that cover things, people that cover things with an even hand. Six Hexenhammers have, has had excellent coof coverage, uh, but now they put out YouTube puts out a tweet today that says, guess what? It's now going to be worse for content creators. And there's a reason I didn't put this in my main lineup for the day, because I know you all just are sick of hearing about this. But I've got to stick up for my family here on YouTube. And uh, I hope that you'll help by sharing this around, too. So Team YouTube puts out a tweet five hours ago. Hey, as, as, as the coof evolves, we're doing our best to support those who watch, create, and make a living on YouTube. Are you, though? Many of us here and our extended workforce are unable to work as usual. So we're reducing certain staffing in certain offices, causing some disruptions. Okay, 100% understand that. Expected. Um, I worked in a call center. Uh, we had the ability, and this was 10 years ago, for our 500 agents to work from home. All they needed was a steady high-speed internet connection and they could dial in and take calls from home. Just bring your headset home. Uh, I'm certain that whoever YouTube is subcontracting has these exact same capabilities. We know that if you work for YouTube, there's very few positions that you can't telecommute for, including IT. I mean, I'm assuming the corporation could run with about seven people in the building and the rest could be remote. They go on to say, 
With fewer people to review content, our automated systems will be stepping up to keep YouTube safe. Well, great. They just work so good. I can't wait to deal with them more often. What a wonderful thing. Ah, this is my happy face. More videos will be removed than normal during this time, including content that does not violate our community guidelines. We know this will be hard for you. What? Seriously, what? Why would more content be removed than, than normal? You haven't just continued using the same bot system that you have. You're admitting to turning up the sensitivity. A system that already is a, just abysmal at actually identifying whether or not content is safe for advertisers, whether or not content actually violates it. We know that your actual violations is really run by manual reports. We see this because it can be easily manipulated. Seems like five, 10 or 15 reports in a coordinated effort is all it takes to take down a video. It's happened to me, it's happened to my fellow content creators. It's happened for years. Have, if this has changed, it would be news to me. We know the automated system of whether or not it says a video is okay or not is fallible. I, for one, have it a little better than most. I've learned to avoid certain words, to, to switch things around, and know what I can and what I can't talk about, which is unfortunate because you should be able to talk about, I don't know, the biggest news of our lifetime, probably. If the hacks at CNN can talk about it, then certainly a guy like Sticks Hexenhammer should be able to. All right? And the fact that you are removing people from your offices is something I 100% understand. But why don't you just ratchet it down a little bit then and reduce their workload? I mean, I don't want to sound like some kind of crazy candidate for new CEO of YouTube. But I will shave the beard for that. Make no mistake about it. I'll tell you this. If the workload is too high... Why not reach out to your advertisers and say, hey, we're turning down the sensitivity. Do you care? Guess what? They won't. They won't. Want to know how I know that? Because I spend a million dollars a month advertising on YouTube for clients. And I have huge Fortune 500 clients and they don't care. The only time any one of them ever cared was when the New York Times wrote them an article, wrote them an email and said, hey, we're writing a hit piece on you because you ran ads on a on a conservatives video. That was it. They're not the, the, this age of, and by the way, where's all the, you know, YouTubers are a diverse workforce, global workforce. Where's all the articles talking about how, how, you know, how we're getting hit by all this. Granted, I'm nowhere near the most affected. Uh, in fact, I'm, very happy to be here on YouTube. But the idea that things are going to get more difficult, not less, is ridiculous. If you have reduced workforce, work capacity, why not create less things for them to manually review? They go on to say, we appreciate your patience with delays in support via team YouTube chat and email. Reviews, e.g. appeals during this time, will continue to work to support you with our best of our abilities. Check back here and our help center for updates. I'm sure it's been received well. See Nick Diorio here. How do I dislike a tweet? Uh, Sticks is near. Ha 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 ha. What the heck? Um, why do you want to turn YouTube into something that I don't want to watch anymore? Can you stop doing that? Can you stop ruining the platform I presently enjoy watching? Can you do that for me? What the F? Perhaps you need to improve the automated system then. You are straight up acknowledging that it does not work and will flag content that breaches no rules. So your plan is to allow the algorithm to replace your workers that can't or you won't allow to work from home by systematically allowing the algorithm to reduce the amount of money that your creators can make and destabilize your product called YouTube. I, I just, I don't, I mean, is this, here's Jacksepticeye. 
This tweet sounds ominous. To be at the mercy of a system that you admit does not work. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad you're letting staff stay home and isolate to keep them safe. But this will scare a lot of people. Those are strong words from Jack Septicai. Believe me. I mean, that's exactly what this is. You admit that it's going to have multiple false positives, but you don't care. Why not just turn down the sensitivity? I just don't understand. This is a calculated decision to CYA, not to prevent, not to protect creators. This is acknowledging that you can't flag enough content. Now, I, I don't understand. This is ridiculous. Just put another YouTube rant in the bucket, I guess. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.